Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you're new to the channel, it is great to have you. Welcome. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share it with classmates, colleagues or friends or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is about mean, median and mode. Now you may have heard of these before and on their own, mean, median and mode are not difficult topics. However, what I want to do in this video is threefold. One, I want to visualize them for you wherever possible. Two, I want you to understand the relationship between the three. And three, I want you to be able to develop judgment as to which is appropriate given the data you have. So let's go ahead and get to work. Now with mean, median, and mode, what we are beginning to do is measure the center of our data. Now the center of a data set is absolutely foundational to everything else that you're going to do in statistics. We use it in hypothesis testing, we use it in regression, and many, many other things besides that. So let's go ahead and get these fundamental building blocks out of the way. First, the mean. Technically, it's called the arithmetic mean, because there are other types of means we can calculate, but this is the simple one that we are used to. And it's just the average of all observations in the data. You've probably calculated the average of numbers before. It's often taught in grade school, so it's not anything that's all that unfamiliar to you probably. The next is the median. And for students just starting in stats, this can be a new concept, but basically the median is the middle observation of a data set. So what we do is we sort them, from smallest to largest. And if there are an odd number of observations, it's the one literally in the middle after sorting. If the number of observations is an even number, the median is the mean or the average of the two numbers in the middle. And we'll see that in a couple minutes. The mode is simply the observation that occurs most often in the data or the most frequently occurring observation. Now a data set can have one mode, it can have multiple modes, or it could have no mode at all. It simply depends on the data you have. So first the mean. So here are some salary data I created. So we have 12 observations and 12 salaries. So to calculate the mean, it's very simple. We add or sum up all the observations and then divide by the number of observations in the data. So in this case, we would add up all the salaries and then we would divide by 12. And in notation, we denote that by what's called X bar. So it's an X with a bar over the top. So step one, we sum our observations. When we sum all of our salary data, we have $1,291,400. Step two, we count our observations. Now notice I have the word length in parentheses there. The reason I have length is because length is often how we describe a data set when we're doing programming applications. So in programming, when we have a data set like this, it's basically what's called an array. So the salary data here is an array with a length of 12. So as students get more into coding environments, I like to describe things in ways that you're gonna see in code. But if you're not into that or not going into that, it's simply the count of the number of observations. So in step three, we just divide the sum by the count or the length of our data set. So we have $1,291,400 divided by our 12 observations, and we end up with a sample mean of $107,616.67. So that is the mean or the average salary of our 12 observations. So next we have the median. So here is our data, same numbers, but I put it in a horizontal format, and you'll see why here in a second. So observation one is 65,600 and so on and so forth. So to find the median, first, we sort our data from smallest to largest. So we can see here that we have a small salary of $29,500 all the way up to the maximum salary of $500,000. So they are all in order from smallest to largest. Next, we ask ourselves: is our data odd or even length? or an odd or even count of observations. If it is even as it is in this case, we then just divide it in half. So you can see here, I have the first six observations shaded in a gray 
and then I have the last six observations shaded in sort of a light brown. And because this data is an even number of count or an even length, we just divide it in half. Six on one side, six on the other. So here's where we left off. Now, since it's even, we find the mean of the two middle values. So we can see here that observation six and observation seven, those are the two middle values on each side of that dividing line. So all we do is find the average or the mean of those two values. So we have 73,600 plus 78,800, and then we just divide that by two. So our median in this case is $76,200. So what if our data set has an odd number of observations or is an odd length? Well, in this case, we just simply divide our length or our count of observations in half and then round up to the next number. So in this case, we have 11 observations. We divide that in half, so we get 5.5, and then we just go ahead and round up to six. And it's the sixth value that is our median. So in this case, it's 73,600. And if you notice that on either side of the sixth value, we have five below it and five above it and the six is situated right in the middle. Now, mode is very straightforward. It is the observation that occurs the most. So in this case, we have two salaries of $54,000, and quite simply, that is the mode. Now again, data sets can have more than one mode. So if we had two salaries that were $78,800, we would have two modes. We'd have a $54,000 mode and a $78,800 mode. And some data sets don't have a mode at all. If all the values in our data set are unique, then none of them has more than one observation, and therefore there is no mode. And this is actually a warning. The mean can be influenced by extreme observations, either low and or high, that are different from the rest of the observations. So here's our data set from before. Notice we have someone in our data set that has a salary of five hundred thousand dollars now look at the other 11 observations they all tend to be around you know, like seventy five thousand dollars give or take so our sample mean was one hundred and seven thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars and sixty seven cents however our median was seventy six thousand two hundred dollars that is a massive difference a huge difference and the question is which measure is more accurately representing the center of our data set? So an analyst could inaccurately represent the center of the salary data. This mean over here is much higher than the median due to the presence of someone making $500,000 when everyone else is around $75,000. Now also, a good analyst would double check that value. They would double check the data to make sure that extreme observation of $500,000 is not a data entry or recording error. In this case, it could be really, really easy to type in $500,000 when it's supposed to be $50,000. So if you do have an extreme observation in your data, don't just say to yourself, oh, that's just how it is. No, go back, look at your data, look at the records you have, look at everything you have at your disposal to make sure that data is valid in the first place before beginning with your analysis. So our final concept is called the trimmed mean. So here's our data set again. Then what we do is we sort them smallest to largest like we did for the median. And then we remove the same number of observations from each end of our data set. Now sometimes this is expressed as a percentage, like a 5% trimmed mean or a 10% trimmed mean. Now in the end, it doesn't really matter so long as you are removing the same number of observations from each end of the data set. So in this case, we will remove the smallest of $29,500, and we will remove the largest of $500,000. So from there, we just calculate the mean again. So in this case, we have a sample mean, our original sample mean, of $107,616.67, our median was $76,200. And in this case, our trimmed mean is $76,190. Now, look how close the median and the trimmed mean are. They're almost identical. So by removing the same number of extreme values on both ends, in this case, 
we got a value where the trimmed mean and the median are almost identical. So what we can do is conclude that that's probably the best representation of the center of our data and our original sample mean is heavily influenced by that person who had a $500,000 salary among 11 other individuals who had salaries around $75,000. Now here's a note. Trimmed means are better for a single variable, what we call univariate. So uni meaning one variate variable. Once you get other variables involved, relationships between variables are created and things become much more complicated. Now, however, there are methods for trimming or removing multivariate extremes, but that is beyond the scope of this video. And I do actually talk about that in more advanced videos in my playlists. So when you are doing a univariate analysis, what I would recommend is reporting all three of these values. Report your original sample mean, the median, and then a trimmed mean, either 5% or 10% or something like that. So as long as you include the original sample mean with the trimmed mean, that's perfectly fine. However, never leave out the original sample mean. You gotta have both so you can compare the two and of course have the median in there. Okay, so a quick conclusion and then we are done. So the mean, median, and mode can provide information about the center of your data. The mean is the most often used. However, the median can sometimes be a better measure. The mean can easily be influenced by extreme values, so be careful. Extreme values may be a recording or data entry error, so double check your original data. Look for a large difference between the mean and the median. It could be a warning sign that you have an extreme observation that is pulling the mean in one direction or another. And finally, a trimmed mean can also be calculated and reported, which chops off the same number or percentage of observations on both ends of the data. And again, always report that with the original sample mean. Okay, so that wraps up this video on mean, median, and mode. Again, on their own, very simple concepts. However, we want to visualize them we want to understand the relationship between the three of them and then choose which one is the best depending on the data we have. And again, that's very important. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time and I will see you again in the next video. Take care.